my name is George Aguilar. I'm the training manager here at Clayval headquarters in Costa Mesa, California. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about our 9021 fire protection pressure reducing valve. Now, our 9021 is a UL listed and MEA approved fire protection pressure reducing valve. The option or the topics that we're gonna be talking about today are gonna to be the operation of this valve, the startup and adjustments, along with service and maintenance of this valve. So let's talk about the operation of this valve, what this valve is designed to do. These valves are commonly found um, on the discharge of fire pumps or in sprinkler systems. So what they're designed to do is maintain a constant downstream pressure, regardless in fluctuations in pressure downstream, regardless in fluctuations in pressure upstream, and regardless of flow, it's just looking at maintaining a, a constant high downstream pressure. So as your flow rate increases, as, as more sprinklers are going off, as your discharge rate, flow rate is increasing, your pressure starts to drop off. When that pressure drops off, this valve is gonna sense that drop in pressure and it's gonna open to get back to that constant high set point, whatever that predetermined set point is. All right, so regardless of flow rate, regardless in fluctuations in inlet pressure, this valve is designed to maintain constant downstream pressure. So one of the things I wanna look at first here is our, is our data sheet. You'll find this data sheet on our website. Um, again, on the top left, you'll see that it's UL listed and it is MEA approved, all right? Um, being that it is UL listed and MEA approved, it does have a limitation on the options that you're allowed to have on this valve other than the gauges that you see on this picture on the inlet and the outlet of the valve. Um, we have those pressure gauges. Um, also, again, you're limited on any other optional features as far as ball valves and, and so on. Um, it's just a, a very standard pressure reducing valve. Um, again, UL and ULC uh, listed that you see on the top and right hand side. If you look on the back hand or the back side of that valve uh, data sheet, you will see the sizes that are available, pressure ratings, materials, and the various adjustment ranges for uh, this pressure reducing valve. So here we're going to watch a quick animation on how a pressure reducing valve works. The speed controls are not going to be available on this valve. Uh, the restriction assembly is standard. The CRD is standard. The CRD currently in this animation is set at 55. So you can see as our flow meter downstream, as that flow, reader, uh, flow meter adjusts, as your flow rate is varying, all right, the one thing that remains constant is our downstream pressure setting of 50. You see fluctuations on the inlet slightly, but if we look back to our outlet gauge, it is constant at 50. This is a modulating valve, so it's not really fully closed or fully open. In this case, it does go fully open because we have our high flow, right? Maybe all the, maybe your entire sprinkler system is running. You need as much flow as you can get. Uh, this is where that valve uh, may get to that near to that open uh, position, but it is a modulating valve trying to maintain that constant downstream pressure. So now we're going to talk about the startup procedures and adjustments on this 9021. So where we want to start with this, again, going back to our website, we have an IOM or what we call a quick manual. This quick manual, if we look on the left hand side, you'll see a startup and adjustment procedure. Following through to the right hand side, you also have maintenance and you have a troubleshooting chart on the bottom right hand side. So you have your symptom, your probable cause, and your remedy. On the back side of that sheet, again, you have the schematic, you have an exploded view 
of the main valve on the bottom left hand side and then you have your common components on the right so you have your CRD our restriction fitting strainer and our gauge option the main one of the most important things on the back side here um, it, sh it does show you what your minimum flow is required when setting this valve. All right. So now let's get started and go through our startup procedure on this valve here. Okay, so let's get started on our startup procedure here. So our 90-21, um, upon the initial startup, you want to make sure that before pressurizing this valve, you got to have gauges within your system. You have to know what your pressures currently are. All right. We do have an optional gauge assembly which can be installed on this valve, but ultimately you need some gauges uh, directly upstream and downstream of this valve in order to verify correct operation. So before we get started here, it's important again on uh, upon startup, all right, that we there may be a large discharge of water that comes out of this valve on your initial startup. So you want to make sure that you have somewhere for this water to initially go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this cap here. Now these CRDs, if this is a new valve, you will see a tag on this cap here that tells you where you're currently set, the factory setting of this pilot. So this one here, is currently set at 60 PSI. So knowing that it's currently set, we're gonna loosen up the jam nut here. Knowing that it's currently set at 60, all right, if I was to look at the IOM here, um, it will give you a, a PSI per turn. The spring that's in here is a 30 to 165. Um, again, it's important to know which pilot, uh, what spring range you have, so that way you can, you know what your PSI per turn would be. In this case, one full turn on this pilot is going to give you a range of 28 PSI. Clockwise on this adjustment screw will always increase your setting. Counterclockwise will decrease. All right. So, um, we're going we're gonna to slowly, uh, you have your isolation gate valves, upstream is closed, downstream is closed. We're going to slowly open up our inlet gate valve and bring pressure to the valve. Once you have bre uh, brought your inlet pressure to the valve, it fills the pilot system, it fills the tubing, water goes onto the cover, it closes the valve. Okay. Um, once we have gotten water onto the cover of the valve, you will, f you will fill this small section of pipe up with water as well. Um, I, again, initially this valve will want to open up. So that's why you, we have to be aware that this, uh, you may discharge a little bit of water on the downstream side of this valve. But once you have done that, we get water onto the cover, valve closes, we bleed the air from the high points. So I would loosen this fitting up here just in, uh, until we got a steady stream of water. I would also loosen up this cover plug here. Just open this up slightly. You do not remove this entire plug, but you loosen up slightly until we get a steady stream of water drips coming out the sides here of these threads. So we remove the air from the cover of the valve. Now we fully open our upstream gate valve. So now we got full pressure to the valve. We've bled the air. Now we are going to slowly open up our downstream gate valve. It's a, again, it is important to know that when setting a 9021, you have to set this valve in a flowing condition. So you have to get this water moving somewhere. Again, on the back of this IOM chart, it does show you on the bottom right hand side here the minimum flow required in order to set our pressure. So if you've opened up, you've slightly opened up your downstream gate valve, you confirm that you're starting to flow water through the valve. 
Again, we have gauges on the inlet, we have gauges on the outlet. You're gonna look at your outlet gauge and now you're gonna make your adjustments on your CRD. All right, your adjustments will always be slow. Okay, make your adjustments slow. Clockwise will increase, counterclockwise will decrease your set point on that CRD. So you're gonna watch your gauge as you're setting your CRD until you reach your desired set point. All right, once you've reached that de uh, desired set point, all right, we're going to close this jam nut off here. We lock that in place. Your CRD is set. And now you can fully open your, slowly open your downstream gate valve till you get your full flow. Now it's important to remember that when this valve is deadhead, when there is no flow, you may see a five to 10 pound swing in your downstream pressure gauge only when the uh, valve is fully closed in a no flow situation. So once your gate valve is fully open and you are no longer flowing any water into your system, that discharge is now uh, eliminated, that valve is shut off, this pressure may spike a little bit above your set point, but that's just the trap pressure that's within the system, your downstream side of your system here. Once you open up some other gate valves and you're flowing, you're flowing again, you're flowing through the valve, you will see that this CRD will track at that desired set point. Um, that includes the startup procedures for our 9021. Now, when it comes to service and maintenance of our 90-21, we would refer you to our YouTube page or our uh, website. On our website, that would take you to our YouTube page where we have various videos of rebuilding and troubleshooting the main valve, which is our 100-01. Um, you can find the rebuild videos there. We also have the rebuild videos of our CRD. So please visit our website for those videos there. That concludes the operation startup and installation video of our 90-21. Thank you all for, for watching this video. Please visit our website for further videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.